Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson and today is an exciting day because today I'm going to be reviewing this powerful little fella, the DJI Mavic 2 Pro drone. And this review is going to be answering one of three questions. And I am certain that if you're watching this review, you want at least one of these three questions answered. First question, if you own an older or cheaper DJI drone, such as a Spark or a Mavic Pro or a Mavic Air, is it time to upgrade to a Mavic 2 Pro? Second question, if you have never purchased a drone before and you are considering buying a good all-around drone, is the DJI Mavic 2 Pro the right choice for you? And third question, if you already own a Phantom 4 Pro or an Inspire or Inspire 2 or some bigger DJI drone, is it worth it to pick up the Mavic 2 Pro as well? I'm going to spoil the answers to these questions right now and tell you that the answers are yes, yes, and it depends. Yes, if you are coming from a Spark or a Mavic Pro or even probably a Mavic Air, it is time to upgrade to the Mavic 2 Pro. If you have never purchased a drone before, it is time to buy a Mavic 2 Pro. And if you already own a Phantom 4 Pro or an Inspire 2, it really is going to depend on your situation whether you should buy this drone. Now, if you want to know my reasoning for why I have given you these answers, you're going to have to watch the rest of the review because in it, I'm going to be explaining why. And also, just so you know, this is not a sponsored video. I'm not being paid by DJI or anybody else for that matter. I bought this drone with my own money because I honestly kind of have a drone addiction that I have not sought medical treatment for, even though I own like four drones now and I've been building up my drone fleet, I'm sure you can understand and empathize. Just keep buying drones. It's fine. It's great. Okay, on to the review. Let's start off by talking about the size of this drone. Mavic, more like Mav thick, am I right? This thing has gotten a little heftier than before. But that said, it is still quite small, especially whenever you compare it to a Phantom or an Inspire. And I believe that I am still capable here of hiding it behind my beard. Yes, what drone? There's no drone here. It's just me. Okay, I just had this idea actually. I could have Rachel braid my beard in a way that it could operate as a pouch to transport around my Mavic 2. It gives me an excuse to never have to shave either. And eventually I can carry larger and larger drones as the beard grows. <sighs> this is patentable. I'm gonna run with that. Next we have build quality. And you can really tell that this is a second or really third generation of the Mavic if you consider the Mavic Air. The original Mavic Pro was well built, but it had some flimsy parts like the gimbal being attached with rubber bands and an exposed ribbon cable which could make the camera easily break if you crashed. The Mavic 2 Pro on the other hand has a much more sturdily built gimbal and overall it feels very well built. Look at the tolerances here for how perfectly the arms slide up against the sides of the drone. The Mavic 2 Pro has much more precise engineering than the original Mavic and many of DJI's earlier drones as well. If you've watched my review of the original Mavic Pro, which I'll link to up in the corner and down in the description, you'll know that I had major quality control issues with the original Mavic Pro. I had to return my first Mavic because half of the lens was blurry and I had to return my second Mavic because it had a shaky gimbal. As I said though, the Mavic 2 Pro is a third generation drone, so I have not experienced or really heard of many other people having nearly as many issues with the Mavic 2 that they did with the original Mavic Pro. You'll also notice that there are some new cameras and sensors on the sides, back, and top. That's because DJI has added omnidirectional obstacle detection, so you don't hit stuff nearly as easily. This is a great improvement over the Mavic Pro's only forward and downward facing obstacle avoidance sensors. The gimbal cover has also been redesigned and the way it works now completely settles the debate of whether you should fly with the gimbal cover on your drone or not. I've always said not to, but surprisingly there were conflicting opinions out there with the original Mavic Pro. Thankfully, the way that the gimbal cover works on the Mavic 2 Pro is that it simultaneously holds the gimbal in place as well as protecting it. You literally cannot fly the drone with the gimbal cover in place. This is a better design in my opinion, but it's still kind of janky. You may also see that these motors look a bit bigger than the Mavic Pro. The Mavic 2 Pro has more power than DJI's earlier drones, and you can really feel it when flying because it feels more responsive and stable, even when it's windy. With the Mavic Pro, I would usually cruise at around 20 miles per hour or so, but with the Mavic 2 Pro, I find myself going up to around 30 miles per hour. This puts the Mavic 2 Pro in a unique position, because while it can still fly at roughly the same speed as a Phantom 4 Pro, it still has the feel and handle of a much smaller drone, which I really like. To put it all in perspective, the smallest drone that DJI makes is the Spark. I'm not going to count the Tello drone. And while it is slow, it is still very fun to fly because it's so 
maneuverable. On the other end of the spectrum, you have the Inspire 2 drone, which is really kind of like a lawnmower fused with a helicopter. So while it is incredibly fast, it is also not nearly as much fun for me to fly because it's just so big. The Mavic 2 Pro hits the sweet spot between maneuverability and speed. And of all the drones that I've ever flown, this one has easily been the most fun to fly. Overall, I think that the build quality of the Mavic 2 Pro is the best that we have seen from DJI so far. And what's cool is that you can see where DJI has taken what they've learned from the Mavic Air and they've applied it to the Pro. With the original Mavic Pro remote, I had to buy these little thumbstick guards to put over the thumbsticks to make sure that they didn't break while I was transporting the drone. But then the Mavic Air came out and DJI made the thumbsticks detachable, which was a huge improvement for portability. I think it's great that they added this feature from the Mavic Air to the Mavic 2 Pro. And I honestly wish the Phantom 4 Pro had a remote more like this one. I feel better making precise movements with the size of this remote over the bulkier Phantom 4 remote. Another feature they added from the Mavic Air is 8GB of built-in storage. This is wonderful if your memory card is full or if you forget to put a memory card in your drone. Last year I was filming a wedding in November in the mountains of Colorado and I brought along my Phantom 4 Pro. It was windy and freezing and I had a couple posed on a cliff while I was getting ready to fly my drone over them, I was about to take off and then I realized that I had forgotten to put my memory card back in the drone. The Phantom 4 Pro does not have internal storage, but thankfully I was able to find another memory card that was buried in my bag and I was able to get the shot. As far as I'm concerned, all drones need internal storage and I really wish that DJI would have put more than just 8 gigabytes of storage into the Mavic 2 Pro. DJI did not stop at just adding features from the Mavic Air to this drone. They also took one of my favorite features from the Phantom 4 Pro. Namely, the remote can now charge my phone in the event that it's low on battery. This was not possible with the original Mavic Pro. Last year, I took my Mavic Pro on a trip to Iceland, and my old iPhone 6 Plus that I used as a monitor with my Mavic had the iPhone battery issue that I'm sure many of you have experienced where it would die very quickly. I would start flying with my phone battery at 80%, and within 10 minutes of flying my drone, it would be down at 15%. I realize it's more of an issue with Apple than with DJI. AI. But whenever I would fly my Phantom 4 Pro, I never had to worry about my phone battery dying. And I'm so glad that they've added this feature to the Mavic 2 Pro. Speaking of batteries, the Mavic 2 Pro's batteries are noticeably larger than the original Mavic's batteries. And DJI claims that you'll get approximately four more minutes of flight time with them. In my experience, as someone who gets ready to land when my batteries are around 30%, the battery life is quite comparable to the original Mavic and the Phantom 4 Pro, and noticeably better than the Mavic Air. Things aren't all perfect with the Mavic 2 Pro's build quality though. If I had to nitpick, I would say that the SD card slot is very difficult to get the SD card out unless you have decently long fingernails because it is buried in there and I wish that it wasn't so hard to get to because you're gonna be taking the SD card out of this drone a lot whenever you need to copy footage. So as you can see, DJI has taken many of the best features from the Mavic Air and the Phantom 4 Pro and they've put them into this drone. But that said, the Mavic 2 Pro still shares a lot in common with the original Mavic. With that, let's talk about shooting modes with this drone because the Mavic 2 Pro shares a lot of the same shooting modes as the original Mavic, namely cinematic mode and tripod mode. And I'm going to let Matt from the original Mavic Pro review tell you about those two. Tripod mode will slow down all of your movement of the drone to just creepy crawly speeds. But the benefit of that is that if you're flying in an enclosed space or under some trees or in a forest or you're worried about hitting something, it will move very slowly, enable you to get some beautiful shots at a very slow speed. The second mode that I use, cinematic mode, does not slow down the drone as much as tripod mode. It's not gonna be creeping around. What it will do is that it slows down the rotation of the drone and it provides a smoother ramp for whenever you are accelerating the drone and slowing the drone. So the benefit of that is that say that you're following the wedding couple as they're walking through a field and you're like, this is a beautiful drone shot, and then they stop suddenly. If you stop the drone suddenly, it's gonna go and they'll just kind of stop and the image doesn't look as pretty. But with cinematic mode, you stop and you let go of the sticks and instead of it just going it will gently come to a stop. The benefit of that is that your image now has just a beautiful cinematic slowdown without you needing to do anything. The con of that can be if you're flying in that mode and you're like, a tree! And then you're like frantically trying to take it back and your drone will be like, gently float into the tree. And you'll be like, no, what a good review. Good job, Matt. 
Those two shooting modes are still my favorite shooting modes for the Mavic 2 Pro as well. DJI has even moved tripod mode from an option in the app to a dedicated switch on the side of the controller. Switch it to T and you'll be flying in tripod mode. DJI has also created a tracking feature called Active Track 2. And from the testing footage I've seen, it looks like the Mavic 2 Pro is really good at uh, tracking things. I haven't tested this yet though. There's actually a lot of the automated features I haven't tried out yet because I'm usually manually flying. On to the next major topic about this drone, image quality. And that means that we need to talk about a lot of the buzzwords associated with the Mavic 2 Pro. Buzzwords like 10-bit, HDR video, one-inch sensor, taco delivery drone. Okay, I made up the last one, but honestly, if they could make a drone that delivers tacos, get on that Taco Bell, I'm waiting on my taco drone delivery, that's gonna be so great. Before we get into all the image quality details for the Mavic 2 Pro, come back in time with me to early 2017, whenever I first purchased my Phantom 4 Pro. The first time I started shooting with the Phantom 4 Pro, I was stunned by the image quality. The video quality that I was getting from the one inch sensor with its 100 megabits codec was a significant step up in quality over the Mavic Pro's tiny cell phone size sensor. The jump in video quality from the Phantom 4 Pro was so good that as the year continued, I started not using my Mavic and began using the Phantom 4 Pro way more often, even when traveling. I opted to take the Phantom 4 Pro when flying to Colorado and even to Iceland and Alaska because I wanted better quality footage. The Mavic really became Came more of a backup drone for me that I would use when I wanted to fly stealthily. And yes, that means instead of carrying around my little Mavic man bag purse, I was instead carting around uh, my huge case for my Phantom 4 Pro and all of its accessories. Fast forward to early 2018 and there were suddenly all these rumors flying around that DJI was going to be releasing a new drone. And bam, just like that, the Mavic Air was released. And while it was a very impressive drone and definitely smaller than the Mavic Pro, it still compromised on enough features that made me not want to buy it. Specifically, while DJI added a higher 100 megabits per second video codec, which helped with the video quality, the Mavic Air kept the Mavic Pro's small sensor size. It also used used Wi-Fi for video transmission, which doesn't work well in cities that have a lot of interference, and it surprisingly didn't include the D-Log picture profile, which if you'll watch my video about my favorite settings for the Mavic Pro, you'll know that I love shooting in D-Log. So I was stuck with lugging around my Phantom 4 Pro for the image quality and occasionally using my Mavic Pro. I ideally wanted a drone that combined the video quality of the Phantom 4 Pro with the size of the Mavic Pro. Enter the Mavic 2 Pro. When I first powered up the Mavic 2 Pro, I was so impressed. DJI did it. This drone is capable of shooting video that is the same quality as the Phantom 4 Pro, but in a much smaller package. For image quality, let's first talk about what DJI has taken from the Phantom 4 Pro and put into the Mavic 2 Pro. First, you have a one inch camera sensor, which means much improved video quality and much better low light performance. You are going to see a massive jump in video quality coming from the first Mavic Pro, the Spark, older Phantoms, basically any drone that has a smaller image sensor than this. I will also say that if you have a Mavic Air, it is not going to be as big of a jump in image quality as it will be from other drones. Because while the Mavic Air has a smaller sensor, it actually has a 100 megabits per second bitrate which puts it somewhere between the older DJI drones and the Mavic 2 Pro. We'll talk more about bitrate here in a minute, don't worry. Other than the one inch sensor, the second thing the Mavic 2 Pro takes from the Phantom 4 Pro is an adjustable lens aperture. With the original Mavic Pro, you were limited to an f2.2 fixed aperture. But now, much like any DSLR or mirrorless camera, you can now open or close the aperture of the Mavic 2 Pro's lens from f2.8 to f11 to let in more or less light, which is very helpful on a sunny day. What is not helpful about the Mavic 2 Pro's adjustable aperture is that the aperture that you choose will directly affect your video quality. And if you choose the wrong aperture, your video may end up looking blurry. In short, you should try to keep your f-stop between f2.8 and f4 when filming with the Mavic 2 Pro. Anything lower and you're going to start to see your video quality drop, with your image looking much softer at f11. I also want to give a huge shout out to Matt Harris with the Film Poets. He made a video that brought this issue to my attention, so I'll make sure to link to that video and his channel down in the description. So what do you do if you're shooting with your Mavic 2 Pro on a bright and sunny day, and you don't want to set your aperture below f4 because you want your image to be sharp, but you also don't want your footage to be overexposed. Do you turn up your shutter speed? Well, no, I wouldn't recommend turning up your shutter speed because that's going to make any motion in your video look better.
bad. I recently made a super short video explaining shutter speed in less than four minutes, so if you want to watch that, I'll link it up in the corner and down in the description. Instead of increasing your shutter speed, I would recommend investing in some ND filters for your Mavic 2 Pro. I recommend purchasing a set of Polar Pro's ND filters. I've been using them since way back when I flew my Phantom 2 drone with a GoPro on it, and they've always been great quality. I have a set of these filters for the Mavic 2 Pro that goes between ND4 and ND16, and I've found that ND16 works very well for sunny days here in Texas. I'll link to the exact ND filters that I recommend down in the video description. The next image quality feature that the Mavic 2 Pro takes from the Phantom 4 Pro is that it is capable of shooting in the H.265 codec. This is one of the buzzwords that you're going to see in the marketing materials for this drone. To sum up H.265 as simple as possible, it basically means that your drone can compress your video footage so it shoots double the image quality in half the file size. Practically, what this means is that when the Mavic 2 and the Phantom 4 Pro are recording using the H.265 codec, the image looks sharper, the colors look better, and DJI also fixed one of many filmmakers' major complaints about the original Mavic and their earlier drones that shoot in the H.264 codec. Namely, when earlier DJI drones were shooting in H.264, you could see flickering in the shadows on underexposed footage. Look at the sand in my footage shot on the original Mavic from this beach in Iceland and see how it appears to bounce every 8 frames. This is a known issue with DJI drones and how their H.264 codec compressed footage. With the Phantom 4 Pro and the Mavic 2 Pro shooting in H.265, I have not seen this flickering in the shadows when I'm shooting at 24 or 30 frames per second. So I believe the H.265 codec has fixed this issue. Side note though, I have still seen flickering in the shadows of 60 frames per second footage shot with the Phantom 4 Pro, and I believe this is due to the video bitrate not being high enough for that frame rate. Regardless, H.265 definitely looks better than H.264. Sounds great, right? Who doesn't want better image quality? Well, it's going to come at a cost, namely in terms of your computer's processing speed. H.265 video is not quick to edit. So while I do recommend shooting in H.265 for the best image quality, I also recommend creating proxy files whenever you are editing, which is going to make editing those H.265 video files like cutting through butter. Of course, I've created a video tutorial for creating proxy files in Adobe Premiere, which I will link to up in the corner and down in the description if you want to watch it. We'll talk more about video quality in a minute, but first we need to address one of the features that the Mavic 2 Pro did not take from the Phantom 4 Pro. Namely, the Mavic 2 Pro cannot shoot in 4K at 60 frames per second like the Phantom 4 Pro can. I really wish that it could, but the Mavic 2 Pro is limited to 2.7K at 60 frames per second, not 4K. To be honest though, I don't really miss 4K at 60 frames per second. The majority of my drone shots are of landscapes, buildings, wedding venues, and I don't really need those shots to be in 60 frames per second. That would be too slow. Instead, I found that 30 frames per second slowed down to 24 frames per second looks great, and that's mostly what I've shot at, even on my Phantom 4 Pro. So if you are someone that already owns a Phantom 4 Pro, and you find yourself shooting in 4K60 often, or if you don't own a drone yet and you shoot a lot at 4K60 with a Panasonic GH5 or another camera that's capable of doing that, then I would probably go with the Phantom 4 Pro instead of the Mavic 2 Pro. As I said at the start of this review, whether or not you buy a Mavic 2 Pro really depends on how you want to use a drone. Okay, back to talking talking about the H.265 video codec. There is one other reason that you should be shooting in H.265 with the Mavic 2 Pro, and that is because if you shoot in H.265, you can also record in 10-bit color. What is 10-bit color and why is it such a big deal, Matt? Well, we're actually going to go back in time again to a review that I made of the Panasonic GH5, a camera that is capable of recording 10-bit color. And in that review, I explained what the heck 10-bit color is. So what is 10-bit color? I'm going to try to summarize 10-bit color as simply as possible. Cameras record colors. And the way that most digital cameras record color is by using red, green, and blue. Because if you have the three primary red, green, and blue colors, you can make any other color by mixing these colors together. With most cameras, such as the Sony a7S II, or all other mirrorless or DSLR cameras on the planet right now, record video in 8-bit color. What is 8-bit color? And what makes it different than 10-bit color? 
8-bit color means that your camera is capable of recording 256 different shades of red, 256 different shades of green, and 256 different shades of blue. And then it's able to mix all of those together into millions of different colors. Sounds great, right? Well, the GH5, because it records in 10-bit color, is capable of recording 1,024 different shades of red, 1,024 different shades of green, and 1,024 different shades of blue. So substantially more color information. We're talking billions of colors. That is awesome because that means that this camera is recording more color information than this camera. How does that benefit us though? Namely, it benefits you in color grading because if you've ever color graded something and you had the wrong white balance or you were trying to do a heavy grade where you're like, oh, I want this thing to look dark and moody and you're pushing the color and then things are starting to get blocky and then it's starting to fall apart and you're like, no, I wish this looked better. The reason oftentimes is because your camera is recording in 8-bit and you have pushed the camera codec and the color information to its absolute limit and the camera's saying, I don't have any more shades of color. I got 256, you're out, I'm sorry. There you go, up until now, all DJI drones, except for the Inspire 1 and the Inspire 2 recording in RAW, were recording video at 8-bit. Now, the Mavic 2 Pro is out and it records in 10-bit. 10-bit sounds great, Matt. More colors. This is awesome, right? Well, hold on a second. Not all 10-bit videos are created equal. While the Mavic 2 Pro does record in 10-bit, it only records with a 100 megabits per second video bit rate. The Phantom 4 Pro, on the other hand, records in 8-bit, but still with a 100 megabits per second bit rate. The bit rates between these two drones are the same. What does this mean, Matt? It means that in my testing and pixel peeping and editing footage, I haven't seen a massive quality difference between the Mavic 2 Pro and the Phantom 4 Pro, even when I'm adding more extreme color grades and really pushing my colors. All that said about 10-bit versus 8-bit video, I do think that the colors look a little better on the Mavic 2 Pro over the Phantom 4 Pro, and I've found the footage a little bit easier to grade with the Mavic 2 Pro. I'm not seeing a huge difference though, so if you already own a Phantom 4 Pro and you're thinking about buying a Mavic 2 Pro because you want 10-bit video and you're expecting the image quality to be crazy better, I'm not seeing a massive difference there, so I probably wouldn't do that. Bleh. Moving on, let's talk about one of the sexiest topics, picture profiles. As I just said, you're going to want to shoot in 10-bit with the Mavic 2 Pro. And currently, there are only two picture profiles that support 10-bit, D-Log and HLG. We'll cover HLG first and fast by saying HLG stands for Hybrid Log Gamma. And I would only shoot an HLG if you are planning on editing your video using an HDR workflow so you can play it on an HDR TV or monitor. Spoiler alert, while HDR is growing in popularity, it isn't quite there yet, so you will most likely not be needing to shoot in HLG. That leaves us with D-Log. D-Log is DJI's flat picture profile that maximizes the dynamic range of your footage and gives you the most flexibility when it comes to color grading. I made a video a while ago about how to color grade D-Log footage shot with the Mavic Pro, and that video applies to the Mavic 2 Pro as well. I'll link to it up in the corner and down in the description if you wanna check it out. When it comes to shooting D-Log, the Mavic 2 Pro does have one nice benefit over the Phantom 4 Pro. On the Phantom 4 Pro, shooting in D-Log locks your ISO to ISO 5. You can't change it, so to adjust your brightness, you have to use the drone's lens aperture and a good set of ND filters. The Mavic 2 Pro, on the other hand, does not lock your ISO to 500 when shooting D-Log. You can set your ISO as low as 100 or as high as you need to. Why did DJI lock the ISO of the Phantom 4 Pro when shooting in D-Log, but not lock the ISO of the Mavic 2 Pro? I'm really not sure why. I remember reading something online about it maximizing the image quality by locking it to ISO 500, but it always made shooting in D-Log with the Phantom 4 Pro more of a hassle. We have one last thing to talk about in regards to image quality with the Mavic 2 Pro. Instead of making things easy for us by giving us one image quality setting when recording in 4K, DJI has given us two. If you go into your video resolution settings in the DJI Go app, you'll see you have the option of recording 4K in either HD HQ or full FOV mode. DJI claims HQ mode is going to result in a slightly higher quality video than full FOV mode, but this comes at the cost of a dramatic crop in on your video footage. Now after editing a lot of footage in HQ and full FOV mode, 
I have not seen a huge difference in quality between the two. Don't get me wrong, HQ mode is definitely slightly sharper than full FOV mode, but it is not a big difference. So here's how I've turned this weird HQ versus full FOV mode into a positive instead of a negative. DJI has actually released two versions of the Mavic 2. The Pro version I'm reviewing here and a zoom version that has a zoom lens so you can get in tighter on whatever you're filming. I treat the cropped HQ video mode on the Mavic 2 Pro like a Mavic 2 zoom light option. I usually film with my Mavic 2 Pro in full FOV mode, but when I want to zoom in and get a much tighter field of view for extra parallax movement, etc., then I switch to HQ mode. I actually really like filming this way. There is one more thing you need to know about recording in full FOV mode. When you shoot in full FOV mode in D-Log, you may notice a slight fisheye effect on your footage. This can result in things looking stretched a little weird and your horizon can look curved. Thankfully, and here's another shout out to Matt Harris of the Film Poets, he has created some presets that will remove that slight fisheye effect. I will also link to those down in the description of this video. I would also like to address a bit of the controversy that was happening online when the Mavic 2 Pro was released. Basically, as I said earlier, you want to shoot video with this drone in 10 bit because it's the highest quality, but DJI was not super clear on if both full FOV mode and HQ mode were recording in 10 bit. Well, you'll be pleased to know that if you check the footage's bit rate, or even when you edit the footage and color grade it, both full FOV and HQ modes record in 10 bit as long as you are shooting in D-Log or HLG. Are your eyes glazing over yet? I'm sorry, I realize that picture profiles and image quality are not the most exciting things to talk about in a review, but I have good news. We're almost at the end. In conclusion, with the Mavic 2 Pro, DJI has given us the main feature that so many filmmakers were requesting, better image quality. If you're a wedding filmmaker or a commercial filmmaker or basically any filmmaker whose full-time job isn't flying drones and you don't need raw video or 4K video at 60 frames per second, the Mavic 2 Pro is the drone that I would recommend that you buy. If you already own an older DJI drone, such as an original Mavic Pro, or a Spark, or an older Phantom drone, and you've been considering upgrading to a new drone, buy the Mavic 2 Pro. If you already own a Mavic Air, I wouldn't necessarily recommend upgrading to the Mavic 2 Pro for marginally better image quality. That said though, I would recommend upgrading to the Mavic 2 Pro from the Mavic Air for better flight time and for better image transmission quality. If you don't own a drone and you've been wanting to buy a great all around drone, buy the Mavic 2 Pro. If you already own a Phantom 4 Pro and you love the image quality, but you hate lugging it around, buy a Mavic 2 Pro. It'll have the same image quality. Same thing goes if you have an Inspire. But if you don't travel a lot, or if you do not mind traveling with a larger drone in a larger case, then I probably wouldn't buy the Mavic 2 Pro. Also, I know that if I don't address this here, there are gonna be a ton of comments saying, Matt, what about the Mavic 2 Zoom? You didn't cover the Zoom. Should I buy that one instead? Well, here are my quick thoughts about the Mavic 2 Zoom. I am usually using a drone to film establishing shots of landscapes, buildings, wedding venues, etc. so I usually want a wider lens. But if you oftentimes find yourself flying your drone and filming people or smaller objects where you want to get closer and get crazy parallax movement as you rotate around them, then in that case I would recommend the Mavic 2 Zoom. I haven't even tried the Zoom yet, but in my experience with the full FOV and the cropped HQ mode of the Mavic 2 Pro, I'm pretty happy. With that, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has been helpful to you and given you some great insight into whether you should purchase a Mavic 2 Pro. There are also a ton of links down in the description of this video to the drone, to the accessories that I recommend, such as the Fly More combo that I highly recommend picking up with the drone so you can have extra batteries and a battery charging hub and things like that, and the ND filters that I recommend as well. I also have a link down in the description to download some free Mavic 2 Pro video clips. So if you wanna download those and see how your computer handles editing editing the footage as well as how it color grades, you can do that below. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave one below or get in touch with me through my website, whoismat.com. It is also a massive, like, size of this carrying case, big drone size helped me if you would consider liking this video and subscribing if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. Very last thing, there are also links to my Instagram and my Facebook page down there, as well as a link to Matt's music list. If you're a wedding filmmaker and you've been struggling with finding music for your wedding films, Matt's music list can help you. I highly recommend checking it out. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.